and then pass it over to Joni. Good evening. Um, Welcome to the open house for County Road E, Lake Johanna Boulevard and Old Snelling Avenue intersection. Um, we, are, we are meeting tonight to present information uh, about the project to you. Um, we'll start with introductions. My name is Joey Lundquist. I am the Ramsey County project manager for the project. Um, I am I'm Brian Johnson with SRF Consulting Group, and I'm I'm assisting Joey in Ramsey County and also the City of Arden Hills with this project. Um, the the next slides will include a project background, a study update, questions and answers, um, a schedule, and the next steps and contact information. And if you have questions and answers, or, or if you have questions, you can um, start putting them in the chat box that we will start with the questions that are in the chat box when we get there. Next slide. Um, the County Road E and Old Snelling Avenue intersection serves um, cars, trucks, pedestrians, and bicycles every day. Next, um, the intersection is also important to local, local business, to residents, to area schools and parks. Uh, the project team understands some travel patterns may have changed due to the pandemic and online learning. We have had meetings with Bethel University and the Mounds View schools to see how, how, the, how their travel patterns and learning has changed. Um, they both still have in-house in uh, classes as well as uh, Bethel is doing some virtual classes. And there are a lot of changes in travel patterns um, since before the pandemic due to people driving, more people driving their kids to school. Um, the other thing we wanted to mention was during construction, <laughs> we're showing Lindy's in front in the view there, which is right at the intersection. We were we, we wanted to encourage people to um, continue to patronize Lindy's during construction as much as possible. <laughs> Next. Users of the intersection often experience congestion, delays and crosswalk challenges. A previous study done by uh, the city of Arden Hills was conducted in 2018 that recommended a roundabout and this new study by Ramsey County with participation by Arden Hills is um, underway to reevaluate the intersection. Next. Um, in addition, um, there have been five crashes that have been reported in the last five years. Um, probably more that were unreported. The pavement at this location is in poor condition and needs to be replaced. Um, some public utilities are undersized and in need of repair or replacement. The project goals for this project are to improve the overall safety and operations of the intersection to reduce the congestion and delay, especially during uh, morning and afternoon rush hour, uh, to include ADA compliant pet and bike access to improve intersection lighting, to replace old pavement, to repair and replace old or undersized utilities, to minimize impacts to private property and natural environment and to control costs. Next, um, Brian's gonna take over yeah. at this point. All right, thank, thank you, Joy. So again, I'm Brian Johnson with SRF Consulting Group. Uh, we're hired by Ramsey County to help uh, study this intersection and, if, and going forward and coming up with design concepts and ultimately plans for this location for some kind of improvements to this intersection. So I'll just go through a little bit of our uh, study to date. As Joey mentioned, this project was studied back in 2018. Um, at, at that time, they did identify a roundabout would be a good solution for this location based on um, traffic information and, and safety concerns. And as Joey mentioned, you know, there was a, we kind of revisited this because of the pandemic, as most of you probably know, as travel patterns changed a bit. Um, 
during the pandemic and still is change, ever changing, I guess. But we did take um, some measurements of traffic volumes out there back in 2018, and you can see them on your screen here, kind of during the morning peak hours and the afternoon peak hours. And um, we measured it again last summer when school's not in session and they were you know, down quite a bit. But then we measured again after school started up again, and they're, they're getting pretty much back to where they were again in 2018. So um, I guess our conclusion was that traffic travel is getting back to normal, I guess, whatever normal is at this location, and will continue to grow as normal you know, um, development occurs and, and growth in the area. So again, we, we compared this to the previous study, it seemed to make some sense. And then we really boil that down to say, you know, what are, what are the, what's the optimum thing to do with this location to make it better than it is today? You know, that intersection isn't horrible. It does operate as an always stop today. There's a stop sign in each direction. Um, there are a number of crashes, crashes as Joey mentioned, but it's uh, about five crashes over five years and none of them were fatalities or anything. So and as Joey mentioned, a lot of times those go unreported when there's crashes, um, but we have five on record anyway. Um, but really it's not so much about this intersection being unsafe. It's probably more about anybody that on, this, on the call here that uses it on a regular basis. I'm sure you realize it gets kind of backed up and, and congested a lot of delays in your travel because of the traffic that all wants to get to the same place here and use this intersection. So again, we kind of looked at three main concepts here, kind of leaving the intersection as it is today as an always stop with some minor improvements. Um, looking at a traffic signal as a, a possible solution or a roundabout at this, this location. So we, we really scrutinize all three of those really thoroughly to figure out again, what's the optimum um, solution for this location. So after going through that, we basically came up with a similar conclusion as, as last uh, during the last day the city did back in 2018, which was a single, we call it a small urban single lane roundabout. So one lane of travel to the roundabout. And if you've driven around the Twin Cities, you know they're, they're all over the place now and they're all different shapes and sizes. This would be a very small roundabout in comparison. Uh, we're, in fact, we're trying to make it as small as possible because we know there's, there's kind of some spatial constraints here. So what you see on the screen is just a concept drawing of what it could look like. Um, one of the challenges we have here is just trying to get this thing to fit in location, but I think based on the size that we have um, in this concept, it should fit fairly well. Um, and again, you know, from a traffic standpoint, it really does offer the greatest benefits. So we did choose it as the optimum solution. And that's really based on how it is gonna improve the lay in your travels. So, you know, a signal, you have to always stop at the red light, no matter what time of day it is, the roundabout, as you know, just kind of lets traffic continually migrate through the intersection and, and keeps that distribution and flow of traffic going pretty well. It also offers a lot better um, safety benefits in that it's a slower speed condition. You rarely have any kind of T-bone or head-on collisions in the roundabout. Um, and it keeps keeps things moving in a more orderly fashion, and it's it's more predictable in a lot of ways for for travels travelers as well. And according to MnDOT studies too, and even national studies, it actually is um, safer for pedestrians to cross at a roundabout than the signal. You know, the the they're usually crossing one lane of traffic at a time, and the um, drivers are supposed to yield to pedestrians. There isn't that light or pedestrian signal head that you see at you would at a traffic signal at a roundabout. But um, again, according to statistics, they, they perform much better from a pedestrian standpoint in terms of getting around a location and, and crossing it safely. So there's some advantages there. Um, we do intend, if, if this does continue to go forward as a roundabout, to improve the sidewalks out there. Joy had mentioned earlier too, there's kind of a lack of sidewalk connectivity and good crosswalks in the area, um, ADA accessible ramps for people that have a disability. Um, we wanna make sure that we make this as accessible as we can for people that might use the intersection as, as well as improve the lighting out here. I think there's only one street light today, which, and there's Lindy's parking lot, which helps a little bit, but um, this is also an opportunity if there's heads, bikes, and even traffic in the area to, to add some, some additional lighting to the intersection. 
So again, this picture on the screen, just maybe to describe it a little bit, north is straight up on the screen. Um, and that little bo white box up in the right corner is Lindy's. So you're just looking at an aerial map of that location. And we just superimposed a drawing of a, of a roundabout on top of the intersection today to say, say basically how it would look and fit that location. So roundabouts have a little larger footprint. If you um, have driven through a few of them, you know it's a, a larger circle and usually a bigger intersection than a traffic signal typically. Um, so one of the challenges we have is, you know, how do we fit this um, at this location? So one of the things we really look closely at is how do we find that optimum location for the roundabout and try to fit it in at this intersection and minimize impacts. We have utilities to deal with and private property to deal with. Um, um, there's, there's a lot of power poles, light poles, hydrants out there. So we have a lot of things to contend with just to build something like this. So we try to find, again, the best spot to, to position the roundabout. Now, also, as, as Joey indicated earlier, you know, there's a lot of opportunity with this project too. By reconstructing the intersection, we can upgrade um, some of the public utilities in the area. There's some sanitary sewer and water mains out there that are a little old and maybe undersized. And this gives the city a chance to get in there while we're already reconstructing and make some of those improvements. At the same time, you know, we need to understand what kind of soil conditions are out here when you build a road outside the, where the road is today. You wanna to make sure you understand what you're building that road on top of. So we'll be doing a, a, soil, uh, review, a soil review here in a couple of days, actually. You might see some drill trucks out on site just um, drilling some holes in the ground to, to take a core of the soils out there to, so we can study the conditions of the soil. Um, with any project we do these days, we um, are very conscious about managing stormwater as we are concerned about the runoff from our roadways into our natural areas. And we work very closely with the watershed district on those kind of things and have to get permits to do a project like this to make sure that uh, we meet their rules and regulations on this kind of a project. And then again, as Joey mentioned, you know, construction um, is always inconvenient, but we do encourage people to continue you know, using this site. We're going to make sure we can manage traffic the best we can during construction and also um, making sure people have access to get to their house, to their schools, or to their businesses during that time as well. So that's kind of an overview of where we're at right now. I would say we've, we've basically just gone through the traffic study portion of the project to date. And as Joy mentioned, we've had a lot of outreach with the school districts, you know, with Bethel College and the school districts since they generate a lot of traffic through the area. Um, this meeting today is to kind of capture the, the residents and users of the intersection. So I'm glad to see we've got a good turnout. I see 53 participants on the call here today. Um, so very glad that so many of you could join us to hear more about the project. Um, and we have some more information on our website, which we'll share with you in a bit here. But at this time, I see some questions have been tripping in through the chat box here. And, uh, and on the screen, you can see if you're calling from a phone today, you can dial star nine to have you to raise your hand so you know that we're going to try to answer your question in order. But Steph has been kind of tracking these and uh, and can kind of lead us through that if you want to start with the questions that we received the date here, Steph, and, and Joey and I can try to answer those. Sounds good. Um, our first question that popped up, David helped us out in answering, but was what are the old or underutilized utilities at the intersection? Um, and David Swergen helped us out by saying there are, or there will be water main and sanitary sewer improvements within the footprint of the area disturbed by this project. I don't know if Joey or Brian, you have anything to add to that response, but I think David covered it there for us. Yep, I would agree. I think he summed it up pretty well there. Um, yeah, it's really, and the, those improvements will really just be within the footprint of the project. And um, but I think, yeah, I think that's a, a very accurate summary there, so. Excellent. Then our next question was, um, was bike slash pedestrian traffic evaluated during the study period? I believe there, there was, you know, I think the county actually had a reporting device out there for a while. So I think we do have some information about the number of heads and bikes that use the intersection. I don't have it today to, to say what that is, but I do think the information could be made available if, if needed. We did 
witnessed quite a few bikes and, and joggers and people using the intersection, you know, just by observation, I would say. Um, but I think that, again, we did record that um, at some point here, so it, it is available. I just don't know the actual numbers. Um, then our next question was, how far does the project extend beyond the intersection in terms of road replacement? That's a good question. So um, we didn't really talk about the limits too much here, but um, you know, if I go back to this um, other picture of the roundabout, what you see on the screen is basically the limits of the project. You know, we, we build the circle, circular part of the roundabout, and then we have to build a new approach to each leg of that. So I would say it's roughly a couple of blocks each direction to make sure that we align the roadway into it. But at the same time, the city also has an improvement project on Old Snelling to the south, which I think is going to be under construction this summer, if I am correct. So our project is ultimately going to match into the city's project at this location. But uh, again, you won't, it probably won't go too much further than what you see on the screen here. But, but Joey, I don't know if you want to talk about other improvements that the county has planned in the area too, aside from this. Um, the county also has... Um, uh, pavement preservation project next year going on at the same time. I think we've got a little feedback going on. <laughs> I think we caught it. Yeah. Um, so the, the county has a pavement preservation project going on next year at the same time to the north from, from County Road E up to 96 that will re, um, resurface the road and make it make it much nicer. I've already gotten a few comments from people that the road the road is in pretty bad shape in a few places to the north, but it will be fixed next year. Um, and then I think, I, I think we're also looking at trails to the west along Lake Johanna Boulevard, but that that'll be um, two or three years out, I believe. They're just doing a study this year. And I think the city also has some sidewalk improvements planned further north up by the school, the, the Montsview yeah. High School. So there's a, like a lot of different projects going on that are all you know, different, different improvements, but we're making sure we stay on top of that so that we can uh, make sure they are all work, to, work together too. So. Excellent. Uh, so our next question um, is, will the lighting consist of newer technology designed to reduce overall urban light contamination? That's a great question. Um, we haven't gotten into the lighting design, but that is a, definitely something we consider, especially for a roundabout. You know, we don't want to overlight the intersection and have it be um, obnoxious or anything be, be in, being too bright. At the same time, we have, it is important to light the approaches of a roundabout. So people can see what they're driving up to since it's a different environment that they're entering. So typically you, you'll see about eight lights or so at a roundabout, sometimes more, sometimes less, it just depends on the situation. Um, but we do use um, LED lights and we do make sure that they're ones that kind of shoot the light straight down versus broadcast. So um, that's as much as I know at this point, um, but we do, we will be looking at that in more detail as we get into the actual design. Because we, we recognize that there's houses nearby and we don't want to have it be too bright, so. Great. Uh, our next question was, um, where are your other options discussed? So good question there. Um, I would say we didn't really draw them up per se, but we did study them. And there's a, we call it an intersection control evaluation report that we um, were just wrapping up, which is kind of, a longer version of what I was trying to describe today as a study in this location for safety and for operations and trying to figure out what that ideal or optimum solution is for managing traffic here. Um, so I don't have anything really to show in that regard, other than to say that they always stop is it would be very much like it is today. Um, a signal, if you can imagine just um, plopping a traffic signal at this location with maybe a couple turn lane improvements and maybe some sidewalk improvements, you know, it would probably be less, less um, construction overall than the roundabout would be. 
So um, I guess that's the best I can answer that for now. We don't have anything drawn up at this time, but just that, that intersection control evaluation report does kind of go through the ins and outs in a lot of detail with uh, how we can get, came to that conclusion. And that gets reviewed by this, the city, the county, and the state as well. So they've all kind of read through that and, uh, and concurred at this point. So, so I did see a, a follow-up question, I think, pop up in the chat to that response of, um, so have you already made up your mind? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I can answer it, but Joey, maybe maybe you maybe that answer should come better from the county. I guess you want to answer that one. Made up our mind as far as a roundabout. I, I think that's what they mean. Yeah, like is this is this a is this a conclusion that we're going forward with? You know, like is this the the um, the only two options that even improve the intersection were a signal or a roundabout and. A roundabout, a roundabout moves so much better all times even when, when it's not congested or congested and you don't have to sit there and wait for a signal if, you, if you're the only car there. Um, so I, the, the county is backing the roundabout and the Arden Hills study also backed the roundabout. So I'm, that, that is the direction we're going. Mm -hmm. And I'll just maybe take on to that too, Joe. I think you, you hit it spot on there. But a, you know, a, a signal could be a, a, an always stop isn't a good long term solution from what we studied. And as soon as we get some more traffic out there, it's going to get worse and worse for congestion and delay. A signal would improve it for sure. Um, but it, you know, we we kind of look at a lot of intersections and say, you know, is is a signal or a roundabout the better way to go? And it's not always a roundabout. Sometimes a signal is a better solution depending on traffic patterns, depending on growth of the area, um, depending on traffic volumes overall. So again, it kind of boils down to a lot of factors here that uh, pointed us towards the roundabout as, as the optimum solution. So hopefully that- um, if, if I can speak for the city um, a little bit, uh, David Smargen, the public works director. Um, so yeah. as part of the city's process, um, we wanted to take this opportunity for the open house to receive public input. Um, there is the the survey on the county's website, so be be sure to fill that survey out to get your input out there to the county and the city. Um, the city will be taking that information and reviewing it, um, and our city council would will be having a work session to discuss um, these design options as well. Um, so as far as the city goes, we have not um, we're we're not really leaning one way or the other, other than we're trying to have this intersection improved in some fashion. All right, thanks. Thanks for the follow up, David. Appreciate that. And I will note, I did drop a link to the, the survey in the chat as well, if you'd like to um, make sure you get your input in that way as well. Um, and I will note before we move on to some other questions as well that uh, we're trying to work through the questions that are in the chat. I see there is one hand raised. So I'm trying to go in order in which it's received. So I'll try to get to you, but if you would drop, also be easy to put your question into the chat as well. So to get us back on to the questions that were in the chat, we have a two part question here from Peter. I think it's that this is great and appreciate the use of traffic data in this proposal. He has a two part question. So I'll start with the first one. What will happen to the several Lindy's entrances? Um, that's a good question. Yeah, we I don't know if we've got that completely worked out yet. We have met with the owners of Lindy's and introduced the project to them, and you know, definitely um, working closely with them as a as a property owner. Um, at this point, what I could say is that the, the um, access that's right next to the intersection would have to be closed with the roundabout or with this traffic signal because it's in a pretty unsafe location. Today, um, they're aware of that. The trade-off then is that we would enlarge the access further north that you can see on the screen here, um, making sure that they have you know, ample room for truck deliveries and that kind of thing. And this other access they have is more for employees, I believe, and we'll also um, keep that access in place for them for their kind of um, entrance to the back for their employees. So 
that's the current plan anyway is, is to is to consolidate down to just the one location on on the north leg here so and then the second part of the question is how would this uh, intersect with the street construction towards Lake Johanna? Uh, I guess I'm not familiar with the intersect with the street construction toward Lake Johanna. So I'm not exactly sure what that means. Is that a different project we're talking about? Um, I would assume so, but that's the only context we have. In yeah. How the question was written. Yeah, I know Joey mentioned some improvements on Lake Johanna. I think that's this leg over here, but at this time, you know, this project will be tying into uh, the project or the existing road somewhere at that first first driveway or so. Um, but I'm not exactly sure how it intersects with the other project yet. So, perfect. Then I've grouped a couple of questions. Uh, oh, and I should just note there is a, a currently a traffic study for Lake Johanna Boulevard being conducted. Um, mm -hmm. Commissioner Nicole Joy. Read them noted in the comments. So maybe that provides a little context there. Gotcha. Um, but then, yeah, to jump back, I did group a couple of questions here that are really about how pedestrian and bicyclists would um, move through the roundabout, if sidewalks would be extended in all four directions to facilitate pedestrian crossings, and even some comments about um, liking to drive through the Twin Lakes Parkway roundabouts. but don't see pedestrians using those. So just maybe a little bit of an overview of how those modes would, would utilize the roundabout. Sure, so again, that's kind of a next step in the project is to make sure we have all the um, pedestrian crossings and establish all that. But I, I believe today there are trails out there on, I will call it the south side of County Road E where my cursor is. And then I think there's a trail today along the west side of County Road going north towards the schools. So um, we're going to obviously keep those in place, but then enhance that. It's hard to see at this small drawing here, but you can see these little shapes that go around the roundabout. Those are essentially um, trails and sidewalks that will be kind of surrounding the perimeter of the roundabout. So you really will be able to get to any, any quadrant out here once this is established. And peds and bikes really kind of use it the same way if you choose to stay on the, on the walks, you can cross, you know, you get off your bike, wait until you make eye contact with this driver. He stops for you, you cross to the middle, you do the same thing for a driver coming down this way, wait till you have a safe gap and cross. So it's, it's kind of standard operations for a roundabout. If you're a more confident biker or rollerblader or whatever, you're certainly welcome to go right through the roundabout too. Um, people do that all the time. Um, it's just, it, it just depends on your comfort level there. So, but otherwise um, we'll be matched into whatever existing walks out there are out there today. Um, but then also, as I mentioned, there's a city project to the south that will be connecting our, this doesn't show on the screen, but this trail right here will continue on the west side of um, County, I'm sorry, Old Snelling on the west side and go further south here to connect into the city's project. So. I think but when this is all said and done, there'll be a lot more trail connectivity through this area. That sound pretty close, Joey? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Okay, so um, the next question here is a little bit of a long one, but I'll read through it. I just don't understand what we are fixing. The only time I recall traffic issues is when Interstate um, 35W was under construction and commuters were looking for an alternative route home. At the current uh, traffic study rates done in September, how often was traffic actually backed up? Yeah, that's a good question. So I guess I would go back to saying that I think there's a collective um, thought from the city and the county that this intersection um, needs to be improved in some fashion from what it is today. Um, there are longer delays, it depends on the time of day, obviously. Um, there is deficiencies we mentioned, you know, with, with pavement, with utilities, and um, again, there weren't drastic crash problems out here. It's kind of more of what we call a normal situation for an intersection. You do see crashes, but it wasn't extreme. You know, it wasn't like it, we're addressing a specific crash problem, I should say. But I do think that there is um, delay, there's safety concerns 
And the more and more delay you experience at an intersection, I think the more um, problems that come about because of that. People start to get frustrated and, and, and take chances. So I, I do think we're making improvements here with this project. And, and again, um, the crashes, you'll probably still get some crashes with the roundabout, but the severity of those crashes will go down dramatically because again, you're, you're basically eliminating the, the chance to have a right angle crash or a head on collision in the roundabout, which a, always stop or a signal, you know, it can happen at those locations much easier. So I do think it's a better long-term solution, especially as um, the area, area continues to grow. Um, we're looking at about a half a percent traffic growth rate per year. So over the next 20 years, you know, that can add up to a significant amount of traffic. We also know that Bethel University has some growth plans, you know, which will generate some more um, student traffic over time. So, you know, we do look out way ahead for what this will do for the community. It looks like Steph locked up on us. <laughs> so that's all right. I can actually, although she's reconnecting, but I can keep, keep going here. I can see the chats too. So let me see if I can uh, keep scrolling my screen here. So I have a question from Audra, and her two questions are, was there any data collected about the traffic leading up to the round, round I think she means roundabout, on Lake Johanna Boulevard, impact to getting on and off Lake Johanna Boulevard from the side streets? Um, I think that, just answer that first one, the, uh, the um, Data collected that I'm aware of anyway is just at the intersection itself. Usually we would set cameras out there and they record the data right at this location since this is the main location that we're studying. So there could be additional data out there. I guess I'm just not familiar with, with, with that. And then the second part of Audra's question is concerned about the type of drivers on this road. A lot of college and high school students, speeding can be an issue. How does a roundabout make this safer versus forcing students to stop at a busy intersection? So that's a good, good, you know, definitely a valid concern. We hear a lot of, a lot of stuff like that. It's you know, driver behavior is a, a challenge everywhere, and a lot of times it comes down to enforcement. You know, to make sure that we're we're getting people to drive the way they're supposed to drive. But I do think that the roundabout, as I mentioned earlier, is a is a safety benefit for drivers, and it, it's harder to have a severe collision in a, in a roundabout. So I think the roundabout, again, it should help calm traffic because you're pretty much going 15 to 20 miles an hour through a roundabout versus if it was a signal, you'd have a green light and you could be going in excess of 40 pretty easy. So I do think it would be better from a safety standpoint that way too. Hopefully that answers your question there. Not sure if we got Steph back or not yet. I don't see her. I apologize, Brian. My oh, computer, there you are. My computer just completely died on me. So I joined from my phone, but unfortunately, <laughs> I don't have access to the Q&A anymore. So, um, but it looks okay. like you didn't have access. So my apologies. That's all right. So I'll try to keep going then. So um, there's a comment from, from Kathy about the, about the lighting. And I understand your point there. We'll do our best to keep, uh, to keep the light um, to a, you know, a safe level, but not a disturbing level. How will the roundabout impact Lindy's parking lot? And that's a great question too. We again, we have met with Lindy's, and um, they understand it's not it's not going to actually impact their parking lot, but they're more concerned about snow storage. They have a pretty good sized parking lot, and I believe they plow it towards the intersection today. And um, our initial conversations was trying to maintain about ten feet of space between our sidewalk that you see up in this corner and their parking lot for for snow storage purposes. So. Um, but at this point, I don't see that we're taking any actual space away from, from Lynn's parking lot. In fact, it might be able to improve the situation that they have now, so. Um, and this may be something we already, already addressed as far as already making up our mind. I think it's, we talked about that already as far as this is where we're at in the study. Um, we definitely, as David Sorengen mentioned too, we'd like your input on the, on the uh, survey. If there's other thoughts out there still, we're still considering a lot of things, but we're giving you the results of our current study at this point, so. Um, Joyce asked, did the study show which way traffic was moving? Was a dedicated right turn lane considered from westbound 
County Road E to northbound Old Snelling. So westbound to northbound. Yeah, so good point. And we do have that kind of data. Again, it's in that intersection control evaluation report, which is a very lengthy document. Um, but we do have that kind of information available as far as how many turns. And that is, by if I'm going by memory here, um, I wasn't the traffic engineer who wrote the report, but I do recall that the, the westbound to northbound movement was fairly heavy, like 300 some cars in the, in the peak hour. And conversely, the southbound to eastbound move was also fairly heavy. So it's that, it's that traffic going to and from, um, from the, the, the arterial network out there. So that's where you're usually gonna see most of your, most of your traffic patterns there. So over to, um, is it Snelling, I believe it is, that runs north-south? Yes. Yeah, Snelling, so. Yeah, Snelling is to the east. It's a major arterial. Okay. Um, uh, somebody asked, Mike and Karen asked about the time frame for construction. And at this time, we're looking at 2023 as a goal for construction. I mentioned the city's project will probably be happening to the south here this summer. And then we'll be um, coming back the following year then for this project. So 2023 is the goal. And some of you arrived late. Dennis uh, said, he, did we address stoplights? Yes, we did talk about that, David, or Dennis, I'm sorry. Um, don't want to revisit everything there, but we did consider traffic signals and, and stop signs as alternatives as well. And the conclusion was the roundabout seems to be the optimum um, intersection control at this location. Um, got a kind of a long one here from Steve. Sounds like you have already made up your mind. How are local people going to be able to turn onto their streets or leave their local streets if cars are always coming through this intersection? Um, that's part of the question. So the cars are there today. Um, they're still going to be there tomorrow. And I think we're trying to come up with a solution to um, do our best to safely manage that traffic. I think there would probably be, would be better flow of traffic with a roundabout out here and you'd have less backup traffic that would impact the side streets. The roundabout kind of keeps things moving and you don't usually get the, a backup of, of traffic with them. So I think you would actually see improvements with that. And then secondly, he's asking, what are you going to do to solve the backup caused by the stop signals at New Snelling and County Road E? This has been the reason so many cars back up because there's not because they can't cross the intersection. So um, I guess I can't speak to the next intersection. I know we did look at, um, you know, how does that intersection affect ours in terms of um, traffic, you know, com coming through a stoplight or a red light and then you get a bunch of cars at one time and how does that work at our location? And it didn't seem like it would be um, too problematic. But I don't know, Joy, has there been any discussions about the other intersection that, that's at, uh, to the east here? That signal, I guess I'm not familiar. Um, that's the signal um, for the ramps at 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 Trunk Highway. So it's a MnDOT, yeah, MnDOT intersection, I think. It's so, MnDOT ramps, yeah. MnDOT ramps, anyway. So yeah, I guess I can't speak to that one today, sir. Sorry about that. But uh, um, if there's a question specifically that you want to put in this in the you have your question in the chat box, but there's also the survey, and we can certainly try to follow up with you with more discussions there. Uh, later we have, like. we have, um, we have previously gotten a question about um, conversely the traffic coming from east from the east on County Road E, and how that affects um, the if it was a roundabout, and a roundabout can handle a. Um, mm -hmm. A slug of cars pretty well. Right. Yeah, I think those cars would continue to kind of migrate through the intersection, whereas if it was another a signal, they would have they would go from being backed up to being backed up again. You know, yeah. depending on the timing there. So I, I agree it would help facilitate that flow of traffic. Um, let's see. So Kathy says the ca traffic gets backed up because of the traffic light at 51 Bridge. This will not be solved by any round at That's kind of the same, I think the same thing we were just talking about. Um, Curtis asks, will RRFB signals be installed at the pedestrian crossings? Um, 
not sure what our RFB stands for. Th those are the uh, pedestrian signal lights. Oh, okay. um, I, I don't think they're necessary because the cars should be slowing down to about 15 and, and there should be brakes in the traffic enough for pedestrians to cross one, one uh, lane, which is all they need to cross to get to the middle and then cross the other lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would concur. You know, it's rare, but you do see them sometimes where you see like an actual signal head for a pedestrian crossing at a roundabout. But as Joey mentioned, there's ample signs and crosswalks out there, and it really kind of puts the onus back on the pedestrian to um, make eye contact with the driver and, and cross when they have a safe gap there. So that is kind of the philosophy of roundabout design. Um, Steve and Pam say roundabout would be ideal. So thank you for your comment there. Um, Steve says, what about just installing a right-hand turn lane for going west on County Road E? I've only seen real congestion problems when I-35 gets plugged up. Yeah, good point. I think somebody else brought that up. I mean, that is kind of the heaviest traffic movement there. Um, but sometimes when you have those heavy movements kind of going opposite directions here, that kind of makes it hard for everybody else to get where they need to get to, too. So we're kind of looking at the intersection holistically here. But excellent point. Oops. And then Margaret says, I totally agree with Chris. I drive through the intersection five days a week and it rarely backs up. I think it really depends on the time of day. Um, mm -hmm. I've gone through there between three and four or four and five and it, it, it can be backed up to Lake Johanna coming eastbound. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. It kind, of, it kind of depends on the time of day. And I think you're gonna see again over time that's gonna get worse and worse, especially if we leave the intersection as it is today with an always stop because Everybody has to stop at an always stop intersection and that traffic just continues to, to mount up, right? Where a signal would let cars go through when they have their green light, but a roundabout's gonna keep it going continuously, so. Got Peter voicing support for the roundabout. They help smooth traffic flow. And then Steph posted the link for the survey, which is on the website. So we encourage everybody again to visit the website and, and fill out the survey. Um, I'm just going to keep moving here. Dennis says, uh, we live on the dead end portion of Hamlin Avenue, and it's already very diff difficult to get out of sometimes in. We feel lights would be better to allow breaks and traffic. So you do get some, um, some gaps from a traffic, traffic signal, too. I, I understand that part. Um, I'm not exactly sure where, where Hamlin is on this page, but, uh, but I think that's a good point. I'm hoping that you know, because of the roundabout again, that will have more free flowing traffic and the gaps will be better than they are today with the, the always stop condition. Curtis says the roundabout is definitely ideal. Um, Kathy again says the folks who live on the streets near the intersection will not be able to get out on the road. I've written many times and seen none of my comments brought up for discussion. Um, I think I, well, I don't know if we're talking about tonight, but we have been covering all the questions. Um, haven't helped the buses and all the garbage trucks going around the roundabout. Where is the snow going? So a lot of good questions there. We do look at truck turns for roundabouts. Uh, we actually have models that simulate large trucks, um, buses, cars, obviously, and how they can navigate the roundabout in any direction. So that shouldn't be an issue. Um, snow storage is important. And I mentioned that earlier with Lindy's, especially having to plow a big parking lot out here. So um, there is some green space at the park, green space and all the quadrants here for plenty of snow storage. So I think we should be okay with that. So we'll keep moving. And yeah, we talked about commissioners, Nicole's comment already. And then somebody asked about, will there be any street improvements on Old Snelling South? That was from Nancy and we did talk about that city's leading the project right now. So I know it's confusing because some projects are led by the city, some are led by the county, some are led by the state. And, and uh, the one I'm talking about today is led by the county, but the city is a participant in that. So they're very aware of the project as well as MnDOT is also a partner in the project as well. And uh, they review our plans that we get to that point. So, um, but again, the city's leading the project to the south of this that we're going to be matching into eventually some improvements on snowing. 
Terry says, thank you for the time to see and hear about this project. Well, thanks for attending, Terry. Uh, Christine says, roundabouts need public education, a proper way to use. It's not intuitive for all. Can be an article, uh, can an article be in the AH newsletter ahead of time? I think that's a great point. I mean, there, there have been a lot of education initiatives in the state over the last decade or more, just because roundabouts are, are all over the place now, they, but to some people, they are still kind of new, depending where you live. Um, some places you'll see them everywhere, some places not much. So there, I think some education is a great point. I know MnDOT has a great resource on their website for roundabout education. Um, so we can talk more um, after the meeting with the county and the city to see if we can get something on the website or in a newsletter about, about how to navigate a roundabout and some of the benefits. Um, Tanya asks, what are the orange lines on the design? That's a good question. And, and I'm sorry for all that clutter. Those are underground utilities on the page. So, and they're also curb lines. So like this line right here is the edge of the curb. These other lines are like utilities, whether they be power lines, underground power or gas lines or phone. There's all kinds of stuff underground out there. So um, I apologize again, that drawing is kind of messy, but that's what that information is. Um, Susan asks, can you clarify what further approvals are needed prior to the start of construction? So we do have to go through a very um, um, detailed process with any kind of road construction. So again, um, we have a, a traffic report that we produce that, that uh, is pretty much complete now. Our next step would you know, be to compile this information today, uh, make sure that uh, if there's any follow-ups that need to take place, we can do that. Um, make sure that everybody um, feels like we can move forward from the city and the county. So we're going to talk about that actually tomorrow and make sure everybody feels like that's the direction we're heading. And then the next step would be to produce some, some design plans. And we, they go through several, several iterations, you know, where they continue to get more and more detailed as, as we go forward. And they get continually reviewed by both the city and the county, and then ultimately by the state of Minnesota too, as to review and sign the plans. So. At this point today, I think we're looking at, you know, six months at least before we be through the design of the, of the roundabout. And then there's other permitting that we have to do and utility coordination. So there's a lot to it just to get it to construction. Um, but that's basically kind of um, what's ahead of us though, if we keep moving forward here. Um, Steve Nelson asks, the backup during rush hour occurs because of the stop signals at New Snelling, widening the intersection and realignment would provide a right turn going west on County Road E. So yeah, we talked about that a little bit already. Um, I think there, there could be some benefits to doing that, but maybe not a comprehensive um, solution for the location. So I appreciate that, that input though. Um, Steve and Pam say pre-pandemic, there were backups every weekday morning with traffic flowing northbound on Old Snelling and southbound people trying to turn left. So yeah, so it was probably busier at that time. And I think we're seeing again that it's ramping back up again. Um, what additional growth is planned? There are no additional property available for development in the area. That's why I'm aware, that I'm aware of, except for north of 694. What development are you talking about? Okay, that's a great question and not my area of expertise, but um, there is a regional growth model that we use for a lot of this stuff. I think it's managed by the Met Council and it does come up with um, growth projections based on employment and education and, and, and development and all that. Um, and I think it did um, suggest a growth rate from about 0.42 or something like that per year for this area for traffic. And again, based on what we were seeing, we kind of came up with very similar estimates and just kind of used a 0.5, nice round half percent as a, as a estimating number for growth. So we basically apply that per year over 20 years at a half a percent per year. So not, not extraordinary growth and you're right, it is very built up in the area. So I don't see there'll be a ton more, but again, the schools are growing. There's just more growth in the Twin Cities in general, so there just means more traffic over time everywhere. Um, Kate asks, will the speed limits be changed north or south of Old Snelling? Is there a speed limit around the roundabout that is displayed? Um, yes, there is. There's usually 
um, signs as you approach a roundabout that say either 15 or 20 miles an hour as you enter the circle. And so the most roundabouts I've seen are, are in that range of slower speeds. Um, as you get away from the roundabout, I imagine the speeds will kind of lead back to what they are posted by today. But one of the main benefits of the roundabout is they're designed to slow traffic down to drive that speed. It's actually very hard to drive faster than that because of the curvature. So hopefully that answers your question, Kate. Um, Peter does second the point question about backups towards the west as a result of the south light at east and or at E and Connor Road Snelling. So thank you for that comment, Peter. And then uh, I'm not sure who this is. It's just from an iPad. What is the plan for south on old for south on old Snelling? It has been in need for many years. Um, I don't know too much about the project myself. I don't know, David Swearingen, if you're still on there, do you want to just talk a little bit about the project south of here and timing and, and what's the plan is for that? Sure, yeah, the, the plan is for construction of, of this year. Um, the plan actually goes to council for approval um, on the 14th of this month. So um, as soon as those plans get approved, it'll go out to bid um, and then hopefully construction starts you know, early this spring. Um, but it'll be a full um, repaving of the surface. Um, there'll be curbing gutter on both sides and then a 10 foot wide uh, asphalt trail on the west side that runs the entire length. All right, thank you for that. I'll keep moving on here. So another one from Peter, is there much increase in impervious surface area that would impact water, water runoff? What is the center of the roundabout green space? Yes, yeah, so two good questions there. And we do um, consider uh, extra impervious. And I think, I don't have the actual numbers right now, but I think it's almost a wash in this project because when you design a roundabout, you actually are necking down the approaches a little bit from if you have like multiple turn lanes that are really wide with a lot of blacktop we're gonna maybe skinny some of those approaches up a little bit, but then the circle itself is larger. So we do account for that to say, what's the difference, I guess, in, in surface that uh, we create for, for runoff. And then you can see this shape right here in, in the Northwest corner. We do plan to build like a stormwater retention base in there so that we're actually bringing that water to that location to treat it before we go to the next natural body of water. So again, I mentioned we work with the watershed district on these kind of things to make sure we're we're uh, managing runoff from stormwater the best we can and trying to preserve the environment the best we can. So there probably won't be a big net increase in, in, in impervious surface with this project. And we haven't got to the details of the design yet, but typically I would say the center of the roundabout is, is green um, or turf of some kind. Usually it's native grass or, or, and sometimes you do see fancy roundabouts with plantings or monuments, but um, we actually haven't got to that level of detail yet, but I imagine it'll be some kind of a grass. Um, I'm going to keep moving here. Someone on their iPad says, at present going west on County Road E, there are three lanes of traffic. If you go to one lane, one lane roundabout, where it, what does this do for the backup? That's a great question. Yeah, so three lanes of traffic, but yet they're all coming to a stop sign. So they're all waiting for their turn to, or chance to make a turn, either straight, left, or, th or through. And so this is kind of like everybody's kind of getting into the same lane and they, they get into the roundabout to go their direction. So it kind of, again, keeps that continuous traffic flow going at, at, through the roundabout. You know, you might get a car or two backed up entering the roundabout if they're waiting for somebody else that's in the roundabout. But our study has shown that the delay overall will be much less a lot much less with the roundabout than it would be today with the traffic at always stop. Good question though. Um, Randy, Randy asks, I'm just concerned about the pedestrian traffic around the roundabout. Will pedestrian crosswalks be clearly marked? And yes, that's definitely something we do is we mark those very clearly with, with uh, crosswalks, with signage. Um, and I mentioned earlier that, you know, there's, there's maybe some education, especially for kids and, and things like that to say, how do you walk through a roundabout? You have to make sure that you're kind of watching your back more than trusting that some, someone's gonna protect you, right? So you want to um, come up to the crosswalk, look at the drivers, make eye contact, they stop, you cross and, and, and keep going. So um, people I think now that drive through roundabouts are getting much more used to being aware 
that there's peds and bikes around that they have to be mindful of as well as other traffic. So they're hopefully they're um, very aware of their environment as they're driving through there. So, um, but again, studies have shown that the overall safety at a roundabout for peds are, are much, much better than its signals, so. Um, Steve asked, the problem I'm concerned about is being able to turn out of our side streets. I think we might have talked about this one already. Um, when traffic has to stop, it gives you a chance to turn onto our street or leave. And with traffic always moving, you won't be able to turn out onto our street. So um, cars, once cars get into the roundabout and traffic is stopped going east on Canary to the stoplights, the entire roundabout will then be blocked. Um, it's hard to say. I don't. I don't think that we would have that. I mean, I, I think the roundabout roundabouts that I, I've been a part of usually keep moving pretty well. Occasionally, you might get a congestion at them, but I, I do think overall traffic will move better through this area with this improvement. So, but it's you know we we haven't studied every intersection outside this area to know for fact what happens at it, but that's my speculation. Um, Curtis is asking when the trail is completed to the south, all the Beth runners will go that way. Um, I guess I'm not familiar with their, their running courses out here, but that's a possibility. Good, good to know. I could uh, um, be something we can talk to Beth about. We've been in contact with them and we could certainly um, follow up on that question. Ryan, I am seeing the chat again, and so just maybe keep us on the, the path of um, bike questions or pedestrian movement, just to kind of keep us on the same. There's a couple of comments about um, the what some of the sight lines are, and then how pedestrians would go from the southbound pass to the eastbound path. So if we just stay on the top, thought it might be helpful to stay on the bike topic quick here. Sure. Um, what was the first part of the question again? What are the sight lines? Oh, the sight lines. Yep. Yeah, good question. So we do we do take a look at that, and make sure that um, that sight lines are 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 considered, you know. But with a roundabout, really, you know, the car is going. I'll just take this this north leg for example. A, a car is going to come up here. They're supposed to yield to the people in the roundabout. So there's usually some kind of a stop bar or a sign right here, and they look to their left to make sure they can see, you know, if there's a safe gap to enter the roundabout. So Really, you know, every approach will be will be easily. You're only you're only having to look to your left, except you look to your right to make sure there's not a pedestrian or somebody or another car in front of you, right? But you know, it's going to be very open, and when you're actually in the roundabout, and there shouldn't be any obstructions of sight lines. And there are some hills out here, you know, like on Lake Johanna, I believe it kind of goes downhill. So that's a consideration too: is how to, how can you see the roundabout as you approach it? Um, and I think by the time you actually get up to the roundabout, you'll definitely know what you're coming up upon there. But we do think about that as far as we don't want people to be surprised by this intersection or any intersection as you drive up to it. So there'll be advanced signs that talk about the roundabout being there and the, to prepare for that, that intersection and control as you approach, approach it. So, um, so I think we should be okay on sight lines overall with this, this project. And then the connectivity, um, again, it's not completely drawn up yet, but I, I do know we're connected into this trail on the west side that goes up to the college again. And then you would come down the trail and cross at this leg. So again, every crosswalk is set up so you're crossing one direction of travel at a time. So you only have to deal with one vehicle. Whereas if you cross the road today, there's cars turning every which way, right? Then you, as a pedestrian or a bicyclist, you're having to absorb a lot more and pay attention to a lot more, and it's a lot more um, interaction and potentials for conflicts. So the one of the benefits of the roundabout is that at these crosswalk locations, you just look to your left. Like I said earlier, you wait for your chance to make eye contact with the driver, make sure he knows you're there, and then cross. And then you can, if you need to, you can wait in that center island for the next crossing as well, right? So cross here, you come here, you look down the road again, if it's safe, go ahead and cross. If it's not, you wait till that guy sees you and then you cross. So it's kind of that same operation around the whole thing here. And a follow-up question to that, Brian, was at, just asked about how big that refuge is um, for the crossing there. 
Uh, good question. Um, I don't know offhand. Usually it's at least six feet wide so that there's an ample room to stand up there or if there's a wheelchair or something, they have ample room. Um, I don't know the dimension off the top of my head, but it would be large enough to be able to hang out there if you had to for, for a few minutes. So, um, I think we should probably finish the, the talk because we have a few slides at the end that um, people have been asking for. <laughs> you bet. Yeah, but we're we're coming up on our hour here, and as I mentioned, you know, um, we're going to. Re this is being recorded, and we'll post this um, presentation on the website. Um, I'm going to flip the to the last slide here that Joey mentioned here, or before the last slide, I guess. Just the next steps for the project here is, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to take all this feedback and. Uh, and review with the project partners, which is the city staff and the county staff, and uh, and see what it's telling us. Um, and then assuming we can move forward, we'll move into that detailed design phase and somebody mentioned what that means and that gets into detailed design plans for the intersection. Um, we mentioned coordinating with other projects out here. We know there's a lot going on and we wanna make sure that we um, know the timing and the location of all these projects so that we can make sure traffic is being managed safely and efficiently through the area and there's no um, problems to um, move, move, move around during construction. And then again, we mentioned earlier that this, this particular location is planned for 2023. And I, I would speculate that we could complete this project in one construction season unless you get a, some bad weather, but it's um, not a huge project, so it should be able to be completed in one, one year or one season, I should say. So as I mentioned earlier, we'd like to hear more from you if you're interested. Um, we do have a website that's on the screen here. It's highlighted in yellow. So feel free to go to the website. There's an online survey there. I believe it's live as, as of today. And there's some just simple questions you can answer. And there's also some boxes you can fill in if you would like to add more commentary to all this. We'd love to hear it. Um, we're going to leave that open until February 16th, so you have a couple of weeks here to, to, to visit that if you want to. Um, if, if you'd like to talk to anybody just more one-on-one -on -one about the project, um, Joey is our project manager from the county. Her email address and phone number on there, you know, she's, she's certainly available to, to talk to you one-on-one -on -one if, if you prefer to do that. So, um, and she'll be managing this project all the way through to the end of it as well. So. Um, is there anything else then with uh, Steph with information or Joey with that we should share with the group or? The only piece I would add is as you're um, leaving, if you would like to more information on the project, please drop your email into the chat and we'll be sure to get you on the, the list for um, further updates. You can also do that on the project website and via the, the survey as well. And I'll just say again, you know, we really appreciate everybody joining in here. I was really happy to see so many participants. And I know this isn't the ideal way to communicate. We much prefer to be around in a big room and talking about this over a layout. And that's typically what we do. Um, but with COVID restrictions, we felt this is probably the proper thing to do uh, at this time. So um, we appreciate everybody taking the time to join this, this presentation. And, and you're certainly welcome to watch it again online as it, as it was recorded. So. Um, Joy, I guess I'll turn it back to you then if you want to wrap us up for tonight. Yeah, I wanted to thank everyone for coming and participating in our open house. And feel free to um, feel free to send us in send us questions or or continue to follow the project and give us your feedback so that we produce the best project we can for the area. Thank you for coming. Everybody.